28th of May 2023. In this episode of This and That and What the Fuck Else, we talk a bit about the EU, the Donbass, some stuff from the Ukraine, NATO, and I've got a good one for the guys. The last page will be interesting. But let's start and take a look at what the Russians are fighting for. That is impressive landscape. And that is what the Russians are fighting for. That is their motherland. Right, let's start with the Donbass. And this is really something that I cannot understand that the Western media does not make the Western citizens aware of what is going on in the Donbass. And it started in 2014 already. Listen to this. This was a video that I watched, and this is a clip, and this girl, a woman says, and then it's like small explosions around the perimeter of the entire ceiling. And what has happened, this is from Bakhmut, and this is what the Ukrainian soldiers did there. They chased the citizens into the basements of their homes, or from or adjoining buildings, or what? And then they collapsed the buildings on top of them. A mousetrap for humans. The Ukrainians, warriors of light, called their method a mousetrap to get rid of the waiters, those who wait for Russians. Before leaving a house that has been used as a stronghold, it is blown up along with its inhabitants. Imagine yourself in the shoes of the family from Artemovsk, whose house was blown up. A child's head is sticking out of the rubble. He's alive, but he can't get out. The mother died on the spot. The father was wounded and can't help. It is good that the grandfather was not hurt and managed to dig his grandson out. What the fuck is that? But that is what the West is financing. But the tide is turning and the West is on their last legs worldwide. Not in the Ukraine, worldwide. The world has had enough of this. Then something more. This refers back to 2014, to Odessa. They were doomed. People who were protesting peacefully on Kulikov Field in Odessa on May 2nd, 2014, were forced to flee to the House of Trade Unions which was already surrounded. Toxic substances were scattered in the building, water and electricity were cut off, and they began purposefully killing those who tried to escape. People were unarmed, so they could not defend themselves. About 300 people died. The 48 dead is a figure given by the Ukrainian investigation. We must remember the victims and punish their killers. And those, that punishment is coming. I've said it in previous skid marks, and I'm still 100% convinced this is what's going to happen. There's no way that Putin can allow the Russians not to take Odessa. If he don't take Odessa, it will be political suicide for him. And then we have something more from... Uh, the Donbass, the town of Pologi in Zaporizhia region was shelled by the Ukrainian armed forces. At around 10 a.m. the Ukrainian armed forces shelled the town of Pologi. Civilians' houses were hit. The building sustained significant damage. 
Presumably the shelling came from US made M777 howitzer. According to preliminary information, there are no casualties. What must be taken note of here? This is what the Ukrainians do. They shoot civilians, they shoot civilian houses, they bomb civilian structures, hospitals, marketplaces, hotels, guest houses, buses, schools. That is what the Ukrainians are doing. But this bloody Zatsi supporters, they don't want the West to know about this. They don't. And the Western media is in cahoots with them. They keep this quiet. And I've told that Zatsi stalker of mine, he show me images where the Russians are shooting civilian buildings. Yes, there are instances like this, the recent one two days ago where they blew up that whole hospital. Why? Because the Ukrainians were using that hospital for barracks and they did the same shit in Mariupol. But that is the story. The Russians don't shoot the civilians because it is Russians. But this, this Ukrainian cretins, they've got a free reign and the West is paying them big money and giving them, them weapons to murder citizens in the Donbass. Don't forget that. And then this is an article from Lugansk. It is shocking for a person who has never seen such kids. With a terror in his eyes, he asks, How can you work here? I want to get out of here as soon as possible. Senior nurse Ekaterina is in charge of medical care in the children's home in Krasnodon LPR. Here they take care of children with the most severe diagnosis who are terminally ill and will never leave the place. The personnel remember how they had to live through tough times when Ukraine completely stopped its support of the center. In 2014, it didn't receive medical supplies and there was no humanitarian aid. But through it all, the staff does its best so the children don't suffer. There's no doctors, only qualified nurses. But there's cases when they don't have the necessary experience. This was revealed after the Russian Road of Life Foundation visited the facility. Our video is about the child's home in Krasnodon. I looked at that video. It is absolutely sickening. But the West supports this since 2014. That fucking Victoria Newland was the big conductor of this sad song. But the reality of life is this. What goes up, comes down. And what the Americans have sown in the Ukraine, they are going to reap the fruit of that. But fortunately, it is not only the Americans that will harvest. The European Union is going to harvest with them. And then we get to this, and this is quite interesting. Albanian births in the first quarter are down by an incredible 32%. Look at these numbers. Newborns in Serbia is down by 5%. 2011, 65,000, or 65, yeah, and in 2022, 62,000. Newborns in Albania, 2011, 34,000, 2021, 23,000. Newborns in Kosovo, 2011, 27,000, 2021, 22,000. But now look at this number. 2011, Serbia, 65,000. Albanians, 62,000. 2022, that's 11 years later. Serbia, 62,000. Albanians, 45,000. And the poster wrote this. Serbia has played the long game and won, with most recent data suggesting that their fertility rate is around 1.7 per woman 
as compared to Albanian fertility crashing to the lowest low levels. With Albania and Kosovo seeing low fertility and mass immigration, restoring control over Kosovo will come naturally soon enough. And I included this because the EU, NATO and the Americans are stirring big shit there in Kosovo. Kosovo is not even supposed to be a country. It's a province of Serbia. But it was one of those places where the West decided they needed a foothold next to Serbia and they made a province of Serbia independent. And then we get more from the EU. Germany has the worst outlook in the G7. Hans, are we in recession? Yes, you, we are, but don't tell full-time American Stooge Chancellor Schultz, as Germany now officially in recession, with economic output falling by two quarters in a row and 7.2% inflation. Don't help that Schultz has forced the country to cut ties with Russian energy, leading to soaring energy prices and a rocketing economic boat, rocking the economic boat too hard. But Schultz is in denial and he says the prospects for the German economy is very good. We will work out the challenges we face. And then the poster says, good luck supporting Ukraine is a protracted conflict, sausage bros. The reason I put this in here, you must understand, Germany is basically the financial backbone of the EU. Remember that. And then there's more. The EU is happy about the reduced demand for Russian gas, but there is a nuance. Along with the demand, the Business Activity Index, PMI, in industrial production is also rapidly falling. Experts for the Financial Times describe it this way. We are now celebrating a sharp decline in gas demand in Europe while the manufacturing sector is being gutted. Europe says the downturn is not luck, but the result of deliberate political decisions. A cult of suicide. And here's the graph. While you're looking at that graph, imagine how stupid that EU leadership is really is to destroy their economies on the instruction of the Americans. And then we get more from the EU. Strasbourg court orders Romania to institutionalize same-sex cohabitation. The EU court has ordered Romania to either allow civil union or gay marriage. 74% of Ramon, uh, Romanians oppose gay marriage. But don't be fooled. 74% is not a majority in the eyes of those fucking cretins sitting in the EU control center in Brussels, the EC. This Strasbourg court is not in Romania. This is what is happening in Europe. That central, that Politburo in Brussels is busy destroying European culture. That is what they are doing. And the fucking Europeans are stupid enough to allow them to do it. They should come and take a look what the hell is going on here in South Africa. We, are, as Afrikaners, are fighting like hell to try and maintain our culture. We're a small minority, two and a half million people roughly. There they sit in Europe, millions of them, and they keep their eyes closed while their culture is gutted around. They actually deserve every fucking bit of suffering that's going to eat them. And then there's more from the EU. Outrage in Europe. Sanctions did not prevent Russians from traveling. 
Yui. Anti-Russian sanctions were intended, among other things, to limit the ability of Russians to visit other countries, travel and change places of rest, but after almost a year and a half, it turned out that the number of countries welcoming Russian tourists is only growing. Instead of Europe, they choose exotic countries for recreation, and the number of Russian tourists abroad is constantly growing in addition to the list of countries willing, hosting guests from Russia is regularly updated, write the Polish edition of Radio Z. And here's some stats. In 2022, Russian tourists made about 22.5 million trips abroad, compared to 19.2 million in 2021. That was in the COVID time. The numbers will be even higher. Turkey, Thailand, the United Arab Emirates, the Maldives and Egypt are among the leaders hosting Russians. Many countries sim simplify the visa regime with Russia. Thus, Sri Lanka, Morocco and Thailand plan to open direct flights. India, Burma and Oman are planning to open direct tourist communication with Russia, using the example of Cuba and the Iran. Cherry on the cake? In the summer of 2022 alone, European resorts lost 1 billion euros due to the anti-Russian sanctions. And another interesting thing to take note of is the countries the Russians are traveling to is not in the West. <laughs> I love it. And then we get to the favorite thing of mine, the global revolution. And listen to what this guy says. In our states, both in the Russian Federation and in the Kingdom, and he's talking about Saudi, they do not accept attempts from outside to bring some specific Western values to our countries. They may soon marry animals, but this does not mean that we should follow their principles. There probably someone is already grunting in anticipation. But nevertheless, both the Saudis and the Russians have an unequivocal position of preserving our traditional values. Something to think about. And then we get to NATO. Listen to this. This is the chairman of the NATO military committee. They have lied. They continue lying. They will lie. Having received German reunification from Gorbachev's hands, Western leaders promised that NATO would not move east. They lied and never blushed. Then with each step that brought the military bloc closer to Russia's borders, they swore that Russia was not in no danger. Then there was Minsk. Now they are lying about not participating in the war in Ukraine. And suddenly some general said that NATO is building military plans against Russia like a black sheep in a herd. That is what's going on. They've been threatening Russia for years. For years and years and years. They threatened Russia. And when Russia said this is enough, now all of a sudden Russia is wrong. And then we get to this interesting topic. The EU condemns deployment of Russian nukes in Belarus. EU calls on Minsk to reverse the decision that can only contribute to heightening tensions in the region and undermine Belarus' sovereignty. Any attempt to further escalate the situation will be met by a strong and coordinated reaction, EU statement. And meanwhile, US nukes all over Europe. Are this these people, are they fucking brain dead? But I like that one. Will be met by a strong and coordinated reaction. What will they do? Run around fucking Brussels and paint the buildings pink? And then more on that. Germany says transfer of Russian nukes to Belarus is a wrong move. Transfer of Russian tactical nuclear weapons to Belarus is yet another prosaic attempt as Russian nuclear intimidation that we strongly reject. Deputy spokesman of the German government, Buchner. What the fuck is wrong with these people? 
They have got nukes all over Europe. And they were planning to put them in Ukraine next to Russia's borders. But no, the Russians do the same. It's wrong. And then we get it from that geriatric in the shit house in Washington. Biden's reaction to transfer of Russian nukes to Belarus is extremely negative. But storing nukes in Belgium, Germany, Italy, Netherlands and Turkey is absolutely fine. Right? The hypocrisy has no, got no end. And then we get to this racism shit. Listen to this. This brain dead victim. A BLM activist is now proclaiming that toilets and plumbing are racist. According to her, every time someone goes to the toilet, that person actually worships the superiority of whites and the colonialists. What the fuck is that? My name is Leave them alone, let them go and shit in the bushes and in the streets and in the culverts. Because that is what they do. That is their culture. Cuck all over the place. And then we come to those clowns sitting on that little island there off Europe. They think they are world emperors and rulers. UK to retain Russian assets until Kiev is compensated. British officials have confirmed that Russian state assets will not be returned even after the conflict in Ukraine is over, still only when Moscow pays reparations to Kiev. According to Russian estimates, more than $300 billion of the country's foreign currency reserves have been frozen due to the Western sanctions. Additionally, billions more assets belonging to Russian citizens and businesses have been seized. According to the Bank of Russia, Assets and reserves belonging to the state valued at 26 billion pounds, 32.1 billion dollars, are currently being held in the UK. And then they wonder why the rest of the world is no longer interested in investing in that shit hole and why the rest of the world is pulling out of all the holdings that is either connected to the pound or the dollar or the euro. These guys committed suicide when they started stealing other countries' assets. But this is what they do. This is how they plunder the third world. Colonize it and plunder it. And now they can't colonize anymore, so now they steal the assets that are in their banks. Serves them right, they must go bankrupt. And then we get to the Ukraine, and my pet Nazi had a fucking heart attack. I gave him this. And he told me, I must not come with Photoshop shit. It seems to me he automatically deducted that this guy here in the front is Zelensky. I wonder why. Does he know something that we don't know? Zelensky responds to the petition to legalize partnerships for same-sex couples in Ukraine. Ukrainian Justice Ministry working on legislative introduction of introdu uh, institution of civil partnerships while Zelensky addresses Ukrainian parliament with a proposal to consider bills of legalization of partnerships for same-sex couples. As his people die for NATO's ambitions, Zelensky's got his priorities sorted. Is this the counter-offensive? Fact of the matter is, this is the shit that Russia is fighting. This, this is a guy that disowned the Russian Orthodox Church that is making it impossible for people to attend services in the Orthodox Churches, but they hold satanic rituals in those churches. And now he brings this cuck in. And you're going to tell me, my Zatsi tells me this Zelensky is a good Christian. Fighting for his country. Shame. And then we have this. Soon the world will know what the Russian military operation in Ukraine was. A massive cleanup operation. The global elites were using that country as their dirty operation center. From biolabs to drugs to human trafficking. And that is the truth, and that is something the Western media will never show you. And then we get to that clown.
Rage hate politics, I like this guy. He does some really insightful posts. The sand is slowly falling, you little sword off runt. The Russian Federation will never allow Nazism to exist on its borders under any circumstances. Vladimir Putin will bleed the West dry of their soldiers, money, military equipment and willpower. The many Führer's days are numbered. Take note of this. And then we get to this madness. Ukraine demands German missiles capable of striking Moscow. Ukraine has asked Berlin to provide it with long-range air-launched missiles that could, could potentially reach Moscow, a Germany Defense Ministry spokesman confirmed on Saturday. On Friday, the Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung newspaper reported, citing two unnamed insiders within German military, that Ukraine urgently wants Swedish German Taurus missiles. These munitions could allegedly place on US-made F-16 fighters, now being considered for delivery to Kiev by several Western countries. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said to have asked for the missiles during his meeting with German Chancellor Schulz in Berlin earlier this month. It's unclear whether Berlin, which said it did not have any F-16s to send Kiev, will grant this request. All I'm going to say on this is this. Germany gives arms to Ukraine and supply tanks to Ukraine, but they want to claim that they're not participants in the war. Now they're considering to give them these missiles. Germany is looking to be calibrated. And this was quite interesting when I read this article. Better than Patriots, Russia's S-350 Vitayas downs enemy aircraft while operating in automatic mode. Another Russian military expert said the Russian S-350 Vitayas was much more accurate than the Patriot missile system. To me, the key is that in automatic mode. We really need to take note. Ah, not me, not us. The West. And then we get to something from South Africa. The ANC has brought us shame and disrespect to our backyard. Foreigners are fighting for the right to sell counterf counterfeit goods because they did not manufacture them and the goods came through our seaports. Apparently we owe them for our freedom. Well, I responded to this guy and I said to him, unfortunately, we whites are too few to help them. But we fought the Brits and got them out of our country. Now it is the black stone to get these invaders out of our country. And I thought this was going to be another Sunday fun day news thing, but I couldn't find fun news. Everything is serious shit. But for the men and for the guys, here's some fun. That is quite a girl. I don't like the, the, all that tattoos on her, but it's a good shot. Well liked it. And that is a woman. I don't need to be a biologist to know that. I hope you have a great day. Enjoy it. Please give me a like and a subscribe and share the thing. Thank you.